Let me get pull that worksheet up so I can see what the questions say. Um, okay. So number two, the identical charges one. Where it says two spears have I have identical charges and they're 75 centimeters apart. That one? Yeah. Okay. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write what I know. And so, what are they? 75 centimeters. So that's my distance. So I'm going to do point seven five meters. So we've got to have our distance in meters. And then um, our force is positive. And if I had my little tablet thing, I could do this so much faster. I'm having to like write with my mouse pad. Um, it's 0.3 Newton. Sorry, that's so bad. And then we want to know our Q, and it's saying that the Q is the same. So our formula is this F equals K Q1 Q2 over D squared. Now, oh, that's not a squared. What am I thinking? Um, I'm gonna, I'm, I don't know how to erase, so I'm just going to cross this out and put a 2 up here. Okay. Um, now, a lot of people want to put F equals K 2X over D squared because both charges are exactly the same. But these charges are the same, and we're multiplying by each other. So, like, the same thing multiplied by itself twice, right? Like, X times X is x squared, not 2x. Right, so then your formula is going to be f equals k x squared. So I think it tells you to make your q's x's at over d squared. Okay. Um, now, when I um, when I do these on paper, I actually um, I'm looking for x. So I'll go ahead and I'll do all my letter parts first before I put in the numbers, and rearrange the formula the way I want it, and then I'll put in my numbers. Um, just because I'm less likely to make a mistake with letters than a bunch of numbers. So then I've got, I'm sorry, this writing is so slow. K X squared. And then I'm going to divide both sides by K. And then you'll see what happens is, is you'll end up having like X equals square root of d squared over, or d squared times f over k. So then, now I would put in my numbers. So I think that's a lot of people get stuck. They put the 2x. I think the first time I worked it out, I did that too, and then I was like, what the heck? Oh, right. Um, so I do my 0 0.75 squared. Um, times my F, which is, what, 0.3. And then all of that, all of that is over K. Now, if I typed it in my calculator without, like, this extra set of parentheses, it would most likely give me the wrong answer because it would do 0.75 squared times 0.3 divided by 9e to the 9, when really we want to do 
0.75 squared times 0.3 divided by 9 e to the 9. Does that make sense? Um, sometimes the calculator doesn't know the correct order of operations. So if you want to put it in your calculator all at once, I would do those two sets of parentheses on the top, like the double deep ones. And then when you take the square root of all of that, um, I believe you get 4.33 times 10 to the negative 6. Are you getting that? I'm clicking to the calculator wrong thing. Yeah. Uh oh. And don't forget to square root it. But usually, what I do is I'll do 0.75 squared, then I'll times that by 0.3, then I'll get an an whatever that answer is, then I'll divide that by 9 times e to the 9, and then I'll, um, once I get that answer, then I'll take the square root of that answer. Kind of like an error. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Um, did you do point seven five squared? Yes. Okay. Then multiply point three by whatever you got as that answer. Oh, 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 are you doing little e? As your E? No, I don't even have it on my calculator. Oh, okay, okay. So do your 0.75 squared, and then multiply that by 0.3. And then whatever that answer is, do that answer divided by, like, 9 times 10 to the 9. That's what that E stands for. Isn't it like 18, 25 million or something? <laughs> hmm. Let me see. I'm going to try to put it in my calculator. I'm going to do 0. 0.75 times 0. 0.75. So when you did 0.75 times 0.75, did you get 0.5625? Yes. Okay. Now I'm going to multiply that by 0.3. I'm going to get 0.16875. Is that what you got? Okay. I'm going to divide that by 9 times 10 to the 9, and I'm getting a really, really, really tiny number. Lots and lots of zeros, and then 1875. Yeah, that's point. Lots of zeros. Is that what you got? Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to take the square root of that. So now you should be getting like 0 0.0000433. Is that what you got? Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's your answer. And so um, they're just calling it 4.33 times 10 to the negative 6 because they're taking that zero, that decimal, and they're just putting it in scientific notation. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is that the answer you were getting? More. And then um, something else? Um, I wasn't getting, I was getting to the that's okay. Part, and then I just didn't know what to do from there. Um, and then the next thing they say on this problem too is they say, what can you tell about the charge signs on the spheres? And since um, since you had to take the square root, they have to be positive. So you have to do, because like a, you know, like a positive and a positive makes a positive. And then a negative and a negative makes a positive. So since they're both, the answer is positive, um, like the force is positive or whatever, you know that they have to be po both positive charges or both negative charges. They can't be different. 